Welcome back to another game design video and this is the follow-up on the hit animation on instance video. Today we actually do the practical part. That means it's a two-parter. The first part is to well recreate this more or less this hit animation with a neat little tool which is just purely for the visual guys and then of course on the other side we actually can do that with code but here just for game maker but hopefully this is uh, similar in other engines so we can just recreate once a setup and then boom all the enemies will have basically the same setup which is pretty sweet and then you can just uh, well have that as a template for all so if you want to join me on this small little journey then stick around this is one up indie i am a developer so if you like what you're seeing and hearing then why not consider sharing and liking and subscribing to the channel of course all right so one way how to do animations and have just one sprite is to use juice fx but a little spoiler from my side it's not free so you would need to have to buy it but of course i highly recommend this software because you can do some pretty cool stuff visually and a few games already used it so you can just see it here and here and you can do some pretty sweet animations without actually you know uh, doing any code stuff this is very good for you visual guys which want to kind of shortcut on that of course it has some downsides not gonna lie but it does the job pretty good and you can do some pretty cool stuff like disintegration and so on so once again highly recommended um i did a video on this program it had some new additions concerning some cool effects but let's just dive right into it so let's say you have a sprite of your enemy and you just need one frame so you just select it here then this dude is a little bit bigger or smaller let's say the canvas size is not the one which you need so you can just this is basically new i didn't know that existed 80 by 80 it's kind of wonky nobody does 80 but that's the correct one for this sprite and then you can actually use presets and presets are just one-time things on burst or time so for example you can pulse as you can see ooh, not the best idea reset we need to angle it correctly in the center where it should be pulse and then as you can see looking better and then you can do some really wonky cool effects like make him dance as it seems <laughs> or some other stuff but we are here for the hit effect so here hit pretty good so he's kind of rotating and blinking really really quickly or you can have this strong hit this is then better for those battlers uh, uh, where you have like a, a long lasting hit effect and of course you got some other stuff which he added so this is pretty cool the shattering the shock wave is pretty nice there was actually one uh, up here drift stronghead where are you there was a, like one really cool effect electric and vanish yeah these are new ones pretty cool stuff so once you you're fine with that you just render and save it and put it into the game so here in game maker what we do is kind of an easy thing we have an object we uh, give it a correct sprite let's get rid of that because it's not uh, important for us so our idle sprite and put that dude into the screen so we can actually check him out for now nothing is happening something like this nothing is happening and then well, how we could do this well we are in a state so let's define a state in the create event so state idle and then well we could say like hey once we're getting hit we are changing our state for now not too terribly important we can just say hey animation end on, on the other and then we could say like hey sprite index is back to our original one so why do i do this well because we want to shake him up so let's say we get an outside trigger this is what i do i just say like hey uh, when i'm pressing my left mouse button change the sprite and then it will run through the animation 
So for example here, this is our visual thing, which I exported from Juice FX, And then we just assign it this one. And then once the thing has its animation run to the end, it just says like, hey, go back to our zombie state. And then we can actually check it out. And that's pretty much it. This is how you would do the visual part. So as you can see, the idle state, we click, and then we got ourselves from Juice FX just a simple sprite swap which does all that together easy peasy stuff but let's actually do that with code which is a little bit more uh, no not difficult just a little, little uh, a few lines of code so a few things which we need to have is first of all a state which is kind of important so basically we will just say in our controller like say hey set this dude to a specific state. So if you are in the idle state, set him to the hit state. And that's pretty much it. And all the rest is being done inside our zombie or enemy or player, or whatever you have. You'll be just uh, swapping the states. For now, this is doing nothing. And therefore, we just have a step event. And then we're just saying like, hey, are we in our hit state? If yes, do something. So we just say like, hey, if our state is being hit, which we uh, triggered once, we want to change a few things. So the first thing would be to blend this dude redly. So we just say, hey, uh, image, image blend, and then see red. Of course, we can use other colors, depending on what you like to have. But this is, uh, I guess, one of the easiest ways how to do that. And of course, um, now he's being read once and then he's not returning. So this is not what we want to have. So therefore, we have kind of a frame, time frame, which we run down. So we just have a hit timer for 15 uh, steps. So we just say like, hey, run this dude down and once the timer has run down so it's smaller or equal to zero we just say like sweet first of all reset the timer so timer equals time no worries i will just post the code uh well in the description below so you can just copy paste it this should be easy peasy stuff and then um, once the timer has been reset, we say like, hey, our state is once again being idle. So this is cool. But of course, our image blend should be reset. And therefore, we just say, hey, see white to the original no bl tinting blending. So if you see white, original colors are being used. And of course, we are finished with this. So this is actually our first test run. Let's see if this works. Anything, anything, anything? Uh, let's see. So we are doing this. We are. And as you can see, working beautifully as it should be. But of course, we maybe want to do a few things more. So what else did we do in our other video? Hmm. Well, we said like, hey, we want to actually have, um, change the sprite. So sprite index is equals to our animated uh, sprite, which is this one. So he's just like ugh, having <laughs> doing some specific action of being hit. And of course, once our timer has run down and we are returning to our idle state, we need to say like, hey, come on, we need to go back to our idle sprite which is this one and then for example once we started we are doing two things swapping the sprite and flashing so as you can see working pretty fine and now we come to the last part which is well squishing the dude so let's say we want to uh, do something where it's squishing so for example if you jump up with a character something like this then normally you would squish him horizontally and vertically you would actually make him bigger so this is how jumping works 
So let's actually put him back where he's supposed to be and say like, hey, image x scale is set to 0 0.7 and the image y scale making him taller 1.5 or just whatever values you see fit. But here we come to a little issue because now it will be stuck for one part, which we don't want. So therefore we have a little extra variable, which I say set once. So we're just setting one times we are, once the hit state is being triggered, we just say like, hey, is it set once? So we set false. So no, it hasn't been set once. We just say like, hey, um, then we have set it once. All right. And then of course, later on, once the timer has run down, we need to reset this variable and everything is being resetted. Of course, um, here we would getting stuck at, well, one specific scale and uh, Y and X scale, which we don't want. So therefore we need one way how to return to our previous one or just all the time update our scale to return to its original form. For that, it's actually kind of easy. We can use the lerp function, which we just put outside. So bring back in the default shape. So basically our image X scale, well, is ourself going to one. And we just lerp it, I don't know, 0 0.2, 0 point uh, I don't know, 25 or something like these values just to go back. And then we will just all the time try to snap back to the original value, which is one. And then once we check it out, everything should work fine. So let's check it out. So the first two steps are obvious. And as you can see, he's getting a little bit thinner, but doing what he's supposed to do. And that is pretty much the whole animation phase. Once again, blending, changing the sprite, which is animated also, but just two frames. And then third of all, squishing the dude. And once again, the result is pretty good and you can use it for tons of different kind of sprites. And therefore, in this kind of regard, the code version one setup is, of course, in quotations, superior to the regular one because we, you just need two different kind of sprites, one for the idle animation for the enemy or for the player and one sprite for the hit animation. It could be just one sprite, it doesn't really matter. And boom, you got yourself a neat little system for a hit animation. And then the next video after that will be once again a short where we have external forces on the hit. So internally we already did this, recoloring uh, squishing and uh, swapping the sprite and then the next one will be just external like some particles flying out or maybe some um, sprites on on that thing to just to indicate like hey it has been a slash or maybe a magic ball is hitting the enemy or the player or something else alrighty hopefully this video was not too long and you know how to do that once again if you are not interested in specific parts timeline will be at the bottom as usual and code will be in the bottom also have a good one one up indie